Today's video is going to be a little bit different from my normal content. Today, I'm going to be talking about law school. I'm just including this video as kind of a lifestyle video. I know a lot of people have been asking me about my law school experience, about my first year. We're going to talk about that. And I do want to make a few disclaimers that my law school experience is not going to be everybody else's. So this is very subjective. You take it with a grain of salt but I do want to share what my 1L year was like, and especially a 1L year where COVID happened and halfway through the semester, we switched to online. So I just wanna talk about that today. Don't mind me if I'm looking down at my notes, I'm just gonna make sure I'm covering everything. As you can see from the title of this video, I am doing this law school little lifestyle segment in series. So today it's going to be part one and part one is going to cover law school in general. So I'm going to be talking about classes and school in general. So what does a general first year look like? So during your first year of law school, everyone takes the same classes or at least they did at my school. They had us all take legal research and writing, constitutional law, contracts, criminal law, torts, civil procedure, and property. I just want to touch on what each class is kind of about, just so you can know what the content would be like. So legal research and writing, that's where you're going to be doing the most writing in law school. Law school is not so much heavy on tests and papers. Law school is heavy on reading. But in legal research and writing, you're going to be learning how to research legal topics and you're going to be writing longer, more in-depth pieces where you're exploring legal issues. Criminal law is exactly what it sounds like. You're going to be mostly reading about criminal cases, learning the criminal law, and as you know, different states have different penal codes, but there's also a federal penal code, so that's what you're gonna study. Contracts is about business transactions. You're gonna be read, read lots of cases about companies and individuals suing each other based on a writing or some kind of other legal agreement. In torts, you're mostly gonna be studying personal injury cases. People or groups of people, if it's a class action, are going to be suing someone who has breached a duty that was owed to that person. Constitutional law is gonna be mostly about civil rights issues and learning the laws and constitutional protections that we enjoy against the actions of others and the rights that we have. In civil procedure, you're mostly gonna be studying the legal procedure of how a case gets to court and all of the protocol that goes into making a case. And then property is mostly about learning the legal issues and legal claims that people can have to land and not just land, but also chattel, which is something that you're gonna learn in law school. And I hope you come back and give me the definition when you know what it is. That's very important old British term that you're gonna have to know in property. It's actually very interesting. All these classes are interesting. And the fact that you don't get to pick your first year classes, I think this is a wide range of subjects. I think a lot of people actually end up going into some area that is studied in the first year. So you really wanna pay attention to these classes and not just for that reason, but also because they're on the bar exam. Now I'm gonna talk about cold calls. Mm. Cold calls, it's real. All the little movies and the scares that they try to scare you, it's kind of a thing. So pretty much the professor is going to call on you, cold turkey, and you're gonna have to answer a question which is usually a question about the case or a very typical question is that they're gonna ask you how the courts ruled in a certain case and how the courts got to that decision. That's the main thing that you really wanna take away from your reading. Personally, I had professors who, some of them would be very blunt during cold calls. Some of them would actually make you feel inadequately prepared. 
And a lot of them did it on purpose, I came to find out, because they want to push us to go that extra mile while we're reading. I had a couple professors who would kind of let you know and give you a heads up that you will be cold called soon because they use an alphabetical system. And then other professors literally will just look around the classroom and pick somebody. I had one professor who loved to do that. <laughs> And not coincidentally, he would always pick somebody who was kind of a little bit distracted at the moment, um, which was funny, but not funny, if you get what I'm saying. Then I had a professor who looked down the list and just pick a name. So there are professors who do it that way, and some of them will kind of give you a heads up. But either way, you really want to be prepared at all times. Because even the professors who did the alphabetical system, sometimes they would randomly call on somebody. So stay prepared, folks. Quick story time about my cold call experience. My professor cold called me. I had just signed the attendance sheet, so my mind was a little bit off track and I didn't hear what the question was. And she, it was my first time getting cold call and I completely froze. And I didn't want to ask her to repeat the question because I know that's like a pet peeve. They don't want to know that you're not listening. But I truly had just gotten distracted because I was signing it and then passing it to the next person. So it was really just a bad timing for me. So she repeated the question without me asking. And then I gave an answer and she asked me why. Um, this is another tip. Always know why. And then I gave an answer that was unfortunately incorrect. But you live and you learn. And the next time I got cold called, I was prepared. So that was my first cold call experience. It was a little bit embarrassing. Everybody's looking at you. And this was about two weeks into the, the first semester. So I was very new to it. But you have to be prepared to be loud, to confidently assert your answers because that's what professors want to see. So law school classes are very rigorous. It's a learning process for everyone. It's nothing like you've ever experienced in your life. You have to be very specific and reading cases is not like reading for information. It's a lot deeper than that. So that's what you are learning during your first year. Homework in law school. Law school homework is just reading. As fantastic as that sounds, it can be hell. It's gonna let you know. My law school professors on average gave about 60 to 100 pages of reading a night. And that's in total, not individually. <laughs> 60 to 100 pages of reading a night. And hold on, I just, I wanna show you a law school case book. These books are thick. This is a law school case book. They weigh about one ton. Law school read, homework reading assignment might be this thick. One night you might have page 301 to page 344. That's 40 pages for one class, honey. And this is not like you're reading a novel. Some of the older cases read very strangely. They're older, older English. So that's law school homework for you. In law school, you're not going to be having, as I said before, tests and quizzes and this and that. In my legal research and writing class, we did have some quizzes that were geared towards our understanding of how to research certain things. But apart from that, in your core classes, you're not going to have quizzes. So you have to track your own performance in the class. You have to track your own understanding. And so that's the next thing I wanna get into is professors and office hours. Please go to your professors. When you're in law school, that's gonna help you, I promise. I was a bit reserved about going to professors because I kinda like to solve everything on my own. Actually, my professors begged us to come to office hours. They really enjoy when you engage with them about the material that you're learning. So now I'm going to talk about studying and your schedule. A lot of people advise first year students at my school to treat law school like a nine to five job. And that's really what it is. You're in classes from about 9 a.m. until 5 p.m. in the evening, including tutoring. 
My school had tutoring and it was optional. It was optional, like it was not mandatory, but it was highly recommended. Tutors meet with the professors and they get the tips and other things professors not able to cover in class, they get those tips for us. And especially as a first year student, going in and not knowing you know, exactly how to read cases and what to pull from them, tutoring is gonna be really helpful. One thing that you want to watch out for in law school is falling behind. See, because there's no homework, no quizzes, no tests, it can be a little bit tempting to get behind on reading or to kind of just chill out. I would really advise against this because when you fall behind, it's gonna be super hard to catch up because we're not talking about falling behind five pages. You're falling behind 30 and 25 and 40 pages. So you really wanna keep up with your law school reading schedule. I recommend making a schedule for yourself that you adhere to very strictly. That doesn't mean you have to shut out your friends and family. Schedule a time where you let them know that this is the time I'm available. And of course, if you have a family or are married or kids or something like that, that might be a little bit more challenging for you. That was not my experience. I am a single lady and I have no children. So that was not my experience. But make sure you talk to somebody who had a family during law school. I know that can present challenges on its own, but try not to fall behind because that's gonna really set you back. Now we're gonna talk about law school exams. Law school exams are something like I've never experienced. So law school exams are taken on your laptops. They are essay exams where your professor will give you a prompt. It's going to have a narrative with lots of legal issues embedded and you are going to have to find the legal issues and explain how different laws would affect the outcome of these legal issues. Some prompts may ask you how you would advise a client on a certain issue. All my law school exams were between three and five hours long. And after COVID happened and we switched to online, so second semester, they gave us an extra hour just to account for technical difficulties, but law school exams are typically three to five hours long. I know that sounds like a long time, but trust me, you will be typing the entire time. People who stop typing don't exist, <laughs> okay? You're going to be sitting there typing your heart out, trying to find all the legal issues that you can, and then trying to explain them in depth takes a long time. So even though five hours or four hours sounds like it's super long, trust me, by the time you read the prompt and start trying to find issues and explaining everything, it's not enough time. Another interesting thing about law school exams is that you will have some open book exams. Oh, I know, right? Weird. But yes, they do allow you to bring some notes. Different professors have different kind of rules for the open book exams you'll be able to use an outline that you have prepared. My professors really stressed that you should not use a commercial outline. They encouraged us to work through our own outline, add our own notes, and that really helps you to understand the material in your own way rather than somebody else's way. Make sure you don't really try to take shortcuts or cheat yourself because really during the law school exams, just like I talked about the time just now, you will not have time to be sitting there looking things up and trying to learn an, an entirely new concept while you're taking the exam. So you're gonna have to know that off the rip before you start. After law school exams, everyone gets the jitters because law school grades, your law school grade is going to be based on a curve. So what that pretty much means is that the person who does the best is going to represent a hundred, if you will. And then everyone else is going to be placed somewhere below or be measured up by the highest performing person's performance, if that makes sense. So it's not like there's a hundred and everybody can get a hundred or a 90 or an 80. Your performance is based on the performance of others. So if everybody does really well, the curve is going to be high. And if people do average, then it might not be so high. So that's kind of how law school grading works. And you're going to be ranked, which is 
intimidating and it's really hard because everyone that goes to law school obviously had a really good GPA in undergrad. So make sure you're prepared to do some learning. And if you do find that you have smarter peers, that's a good thing because now you're all iron sharpening iron. You're going to push each other and help each other to learn. I want to briefly mention attendance. Class attendance, you're gonna to want to be in class every day. Basically, you don't want to miss class unless you're dead. And I'm not even, that's not even a joke. Um, if you're dead or really sick, that's when you miss classes. But don't just sleep in and be like, oh, I don't feel like going today. This is not undergrad, I promise you. Because the way that law school is taught, this is something I actually forgot to mention. Law school classes are taught in a Socratic method. So that means the teachers aren't really lecturing as such. They are asking questions and that's how we learn the material from the cases. This was really hard for me to grasp when I first started because I was like, why aren't they just telling us what we need to know? Why aren't they just giving us the rules? Why don't they just tell us what the court decided? But no, they're going to ask you those questions and they're going to probe until they get you to come to the right answer. So with that style of teaching, you really don't want to miss classes because somebody could easily just give you their notes. But if you're not there to hear how the answers to the notes were arri arrived at, that's going to be to your detriment. So you really want to try and be in class if you can. And if you need accommodations, just let your law school registrar or deans know, and they will definitely work with you. That is all for my first law school video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it has given you insight on the academic side of law school. In part two of this series, I am going to be talking about the vibe of law school. So I'm gonna be talking about the environment, the aura, demographics, and get you prepared for the kind of environment that you're going to be working in. Again, this is going to depend on what school you go to and if it's a small school, large school, private school, public school. So I look forward to seeing you guys next time. Stay tuned for this law school series. I promise to try to make these interesting for everyone, not just law students. But if you're just curious what law school is like, I hope that you found this interesting. Let me know in the comments if you would ever go to law school or if you're thinking about it. And I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Danny 4 l Also guys, if I look a little bit strange, tell me in the comments. Um, <laughs> I did call myself trying to wear lashes today, so let me know how I did in the comments. If you're not into law school stuff, let me know how I did with this look. But I do kind of like it. Also guys, this is my outfit. <laughs> This is my uh, Shein skirt, Shein Paul skirt. So check out my Shein video if you haven't seen it, girl. Thank you for watching to the end, and we are out.